Hey Fish Heads, Jen Crevasse, Jekyll Bates at Bull Shad Studios. Welcome to another spray session. It's been way, way, way too long since I've done anything from the aquarium series, but I've got my Axel Rods Mini Atlas out. I'm going to pick something out of thin air that I've never painted before, and you guys are going to come along for the ride. So stick around. Should be a real good show today. <laughs> So many good candidates. This is a little bit dark of an image, but I think I want to go with this guy today. This is Paris Fromenis Disneri. It's, um, it's a licorice garami. Let's see if we can find a brighter image of it, though. One of the things that I want to try and portray in this, and you guys are going to look at a different version of this. It's a little bit brighter. That image is going to pop up on your screen now. But I'm going to put it onto a Dinger Custom Bait flat side. I haven't had one of these in a while. I've got, I found a few left over from the move. But one of the things about building these flat sides is that you have to actually manipulate the lip a little bit. It comes with a circuit board lip unattached. And usually you have to get a little bit of whittling done just to open up this lip slot a little bit. Or you can kind of take your blade and narrow these down. There we go. With very little effort and just a little bit of whittling with this blade, you can get a good fit with these things. And now I'm just going to go ahead and super glue just a little bit and then tape this lip off and get started with the paint. But just a little bit of prep to do on this. Not too bad. We want to go ahead and get that good and set. Give that a chance to get in there. We'll come right back and start priming it. Just go ahead and bring this over the edge. There's really no need to corner this off. It's a pretty flat lip. And it is small enough to where it should be a one and done deal with your tape. Just get it down around those edges lightly. And go ahead and set this in the cradle probably just set it by the lip. Now being that this is the aquarium series and there's just not a whole lot of real estate on this thing, one coat of primer should do it. This golden is pretty thick. I think the last spray session I demonstrated it was just real easy to coat and that I should have been using it all along. This is fantastic primer. We'll get a good heat set on this. 100 CFM exhaust fan on. We're ready to go on the main paint now. And one thing that you guys might have noticed from the original picture versus what I have here and what's up top for you guys to take a look at and practice with is that the nose of the fish in the book is much darker than the one that's depicted here. So one of the things that I'm going to try and do is blend just a little bit. I really like the dark nose on that breeding male they show in that real dark picture in axle rods, but I like the definition in the lining and the shading on this one much better. Now obviously we don't have fins on this particular blank, so what I'm going to do is just kind of incorporate a little bit of red into the edges and maybe just a little bit of blue on the bottom end just to try and get that all on this bait. But it should be a fairly easy build for you guys. Uh, just kind of get into practice with doing things that are not normally forage fish. And I love the aquarium series because it gives you a chance to practice with some fish that you're not ne necessarily going to see all the time. Unless you ha if you're an aquarium person and you keep aquariums or have an aquarium at home, it's a freshwater, you might very well have one of these in your tank. The other thing that I want to do today is practice on freestyle. So instead of laying down tape or doing anything like that with these lines, I'm going to go ahead and do freestyle lining. And we're going to do two on each side, one on the top. And one thing that I always recommend, and I've been saying this for years, is that you, if you need practice on your freehand, you want to drop your pressure to about 20. 
and then just practice lines. If you need your hand to steady your other hand, then that's fine. If you can do it, and then practice things that are simple, like lettering. Just try and make all your points work out to where you can get something decent. For this, you'll notice that it goes through the eye. So this line goes all the way from the tip of the nose to the tail. So we're gonna make two and we're gonna start right here at the nose. And we're gonna come off from that and go just a little bit lower. Now remember, we're also gonna be adding in some of the fin detail on here as well. Just a nice loose two lines. Do the same thing on the other side. Now I'm a creature of habit, so I have a tendency to want to go from left to right. If you look at your copy, that would go straight from the eye to the middle of the tail. The second one I've laid underneath that. And you just want to be somewhat similar on how you do it on the other side. So I'm going to go from the middle of the tail through the eye. Same thing, just a different direction. This one will go just a little bit underneath. Come back and darken that in. And it's something you guys can just practice on. Keeping the same line as you guys go along. I'm gonna drop one more line up the middle of the back. It's okay if you get a little wonky with it. This is gonna cover the whole back. Now that we've got our lines in, both sides of the bait. I normally recommend you guys go from light to dark, but in this case we want this background in because you will see that there's scales that are going to be showing through over top of that. And because we don't have fins on this, I'm going to do just a little bit of shading in red and then some red and blue on the back. And we'll finish up with a little bit of dark at the very end of this because there's the tip of the tail right here. And then I do want to accent just a little bit of uh, darker color on the nose. Go ahead and grab some transparent red. Just create X. Just using basics today. because we want to kind of go away from this and just give a little bit of an indication of what we're going to be doing. I'm going to be aiming the airbrush up. I'm going to get just a little bit of red on this back. Not completely, just a little bit. Do the other side as well. Just kind of aim that up. Imagine the photographer probably shot this with a flash which is why you're seeing all those scales lit up on this particular version of the fish but it also highlights this little thin strip of blue I'm gonna just use a basic Spectratex metallic blue for this but if you have a middle-of-the-road blue anything that kind of has this shading to it you can always go back and throw some pearl over it later barely need two or three drops in here. Probably that's too much, but I'm going to do that anyways. And then just come just a little bit, just right around our belly.
And again, the only reason that we're doing this is because we don't have fins on this particular flat side. So we're representing that the best way that we can on the fish itself. Now also on this particular version of this garami, you're seeing a little bit of darker, maybe a reddish brown or a reddish black. I'm going to try and represent that with, you guessed it, detail black magenta. Just around the nose and extremely light. So get all that blue out of there. That should be good enough. Color to just kind of get the nose, the head. Maybe just a little bit around the belly. Now here comes the fun part. We can do this one of two ways. I think the way that I want to do this is with a stencil from Brian over at Anarchy, and it's just a standard scale pattern. It's not the uh, snakeskin scale pattern. It's just a straight scale. If I can find it, hopefully I can. Now it's in here somewhere. There it is. Nope, that's not it. Watch, it's gonna, oh, it's always Murphy's Law. It's gonna be the absolute last stencil I find. Yep. Wherever could it be? There it is. So, if you were wondering how we were gonna get this flashiness in the scales, we're gonna go ahead and use this, an overlay in white with this scale pattern everything that we've sprayed so far. It's going to be very light and then I'm probably going to shoot like a pearlescence over top of that. Again, we're just kind of going with this one flying by the seat of our pants. So I'm going to put this gold and titanium back in the paint cup here. And keep this pressure super low. Make sure this is going to make the pattern we want it to make. I think that it is. I think I'm going to be pretty comfortable with this. That looks decent. Let's go ahead and knock that out. We just kind of get a... Now I can probably lay this on its own surface, but I think just as easily I can lean this against the side of this here. Back. Relatively happy with how this is turning out. Come back and do the same thing on the other side. The key is keeping this thing steady and not sliding this stencil as you're moving it on the bait. We'll get one across the top of the back. Just kind of curve that with your hand. Bring it over top. Not bad, not bad. I'm going to go ahead and hit this bait lightly over all of it with some of this pearlescent. And that's going to bring that background back into play, where it kind of disappeared with this white. This will always make that background pop back out. Let me get a quick heat set on this and I'll come right back in. I've got just a little bit of red loaded back into the chamber. You'll notice the red that are on the fins do not have scale markings on them. And because we're kind of dropping that in to represent the fins, we're just going to come back and lightly take out this top set of white. You can do that on both sides here. That's not too prominent. As a matter of fact, let me get this out of the cradle completely kind of hand hold this as I go, make it a little bit easier on myself. Just barely get the top of that edge. A little 
little bit better there. And now we're going to go ahead and bring that black back in because it is pretty prominent on the nose and on the tail area. You can see that there's a lot of black in here and on the other picture that I kind of wanted to blend, I was talking about that a little bit earlier in the video, I wanted to get the nose just a little bit darker as well. I'm going to start with a drop of black magenta, just one. Got my pressure about 15. And just come back in, drop that into the nose area, and then we're going to come back in and accent over with black. Just a little bit, darken up the scales on the top. You can still see those scales, they're just a little bit darker now. Push the rest of that out of the chamber and put in a drop of black and we should be able to, just with one drop, to kind of darken this up enough. Just hit right around that eye and then back on the tail cool thing about this flat side is it actually has a little divot towards the tail that makes that super easy to lay in this dark piece on this fish, this gourami. And there's also where the peck fin would be, just a little bit of a dark spot. So we're going to lay that in right at the edge there see that there's just a little bit of a dark spot right there. Heat set. All right, we've got the tape off the bill. We're ready to do just a little bit of detailing. Add just a couple of dots on the gill plate here. Not a whole lot, just a few. This is a Uniball Vision Elite. We are going to keep natural eyes on this. The eyes on this fish are silver, that clearish silver. Go with some standard six. So six millimeter eyes, or probably do six five on these six and a half millimeter. I'm just gonna do these six. Drops in real nice. Nope, looks like perfect six. And there we have it. This is my interpretation of this licorice garami down here, which we didn't really use this for because that's a really dark, there's not a whole lot going on on this, but I did like the interpretation from this photo, which is pretty much what we based our pattern on today. I'm gonna drop this into some KBS and I really wanted to thank you guys for hanging out with me today on the channel. I hope I've been able to teach you a couple of things, but it's always my goal to get you guys kind of out of what you're normally used to doing with airbrushing and, and doing baits and blanks. And I haven't done a small crankbait in a while. I've pretty much been focused on swim baits because that's kind of my world right now. But it's really cool to come back and just downsize a little bit, do an aquarium series, and hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Thank you so much for spending time on the channel today, and I will see you guys on the next video. Cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates. Morning. Morning. <laughs> what? <laughs>